Shudder.com is an American streaming service founded in 2015 and owned by AMC Networks, where when you pay a monthly subscription like any other streaming site, it gives you a wide range of content for all you horror and thriller fiction fans. Today on Steve's Indies, this will be a super quick review of Shudder as well as content, features, pricing, where and how to stream it, and most importantly, whether or not it's worth it. So if you haven't already done so, then please subscribe to my channel for future reviews, reviews and film stuff and like this video if you enjoy. So when it was first founded, Shudder obviously had more content and unfortunately for all you UK viewers like myself, you still have less basically and other than our North American and Central American counterparts, you still have over 200 pieces of content but it should be more than enough, right? I'd say in the age of streaming services or as I like to call it, the streaming wars, Shudder really did and has still managed to latch onto its loyal, horror, crazy and niche audience. With more subscribers every day, considering it's competing with say, Screenbox or IFC Midnight, it's doing pretty well. I've done a video on IFC Unlimited if you fancy checking that one out and feel like branching out to other horror streaming sites. So it does have benefits every now and then, however, not as much as you would like if horror is your only outlet, I guess. So a big Shudder exclusive in 2017 was also the 19 71 unrated cut of The Devils, which at the time was actually to this day remains one of the most controversial films ever made. But still, the content ranges from proper B-movie laugh out loud rubbish like The Mutilator and of course Phantasm and old candy corn. Just creep show, things like that that are really, really bad. But then you also do get your very, very good films like Thirst, which has the Japanese and the original. And also films like Donnie Darko, which is incredible. And I guess you couldn't really say it's a horror, but still, it kind of explains to you the range of films that they have. It's not just your cheesy B-movie type of horrors. So like Netflix and Prime, it's on demand, click and view, watch anywhere, anytime. I didn't have any issues with playback at all, but I guess it really does depend on your internet connection. For me, I didn't have any issues with this. But there aren't just films on Shudder, it includes something called Shudder TV, and it is constant streaming. So for example, you get live films, just random films. Earlier on, they were playing The Curse of La Lorna, and at the moment they're playing uh, Mar Martyr's Lane or something. And it has a section called Series and Podcasts, which do show decent horror TV shows. It's awesome because I love a good horror or thriller series. Don't get me wrong, these aren't top quality ones in my opinion, that is. Not like Netflix, Hill House or Midnight Mass, for example, but there is so much potential there. And in my opinion, when the original TV content kicks off, I reckon we will see the price increase, at least on similar terms with other streaming sites as well. So, of course, you have your movies section and this includes loads of genres like supernatural thrillers again paranormal although i'd say that's more supernatural to be honest international ones as well which i'm a massive fan of i love the way that american streaming sites are realizing the potential for for foreign horror films you've even got a comedy section as well which is fantastic it, it's got something for for everybody to be honest mum and dad was a really hilarious one still you get a very wide range of content. But what makes Shudder so unique is the way it block suggests films into groups. There is a section called collections, such as A Good Scare, which has 37 titles, and also a section called Horror 101, which includes the horror or the foundations of horror, should I say, going all the way back to films like White Zombie and Nosferatu that were two of the first zombie films ever made. Oh, and of course, Curse of Frankenstein and the original 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it does have everything. And with sections or collections, should I say, like this, you can tell that it really is an homage to, to the horror in, in general. So the sub genres as well, comedies, terror, neo slashes. I actually don't know what this is about. I'm guessing more modern day uh, those forms of the, the slasher genre as well, which could be really interesting. In a previous video, I actually said that for me, that was actually a dying genre or sub genre. So it has a lot of different things that they've collected together. The wide variety of, of content on this and is, is quite vast at times. So it's really good to have a, a collections 
section. It's kind of similar to how Netflix does it in its suggestions, but with this, it seems like it's more in depth. Like other streaming sites, it has a my list section, which is essentially a watch list for later or to watch again, which is massively helpful. Like when I mentioned, it is a it, there is a lot of content on here, so it can be important to just maybe add it to your list. And I've purposely emptied my list so I can just show you. It's as simple as that. So it's really easy to use and I really, really enjoyed this feature. But the two features that I particularly like compared to other streaming sites is just how niche it is. It understands its audience with the collections, like I mentioned, classic and indie horror cinema, and also just small things as well. Take, for example, the interface. When you hover over the different main sections, well, it kind of shudders, which I mean, it's not a deal breaker for me, to be honest, but it's the small things that are important and it just shows that they are basically like the members and they're committed to creating a cool scary experience even when just navigating the website. So another feature that appeals to the social aspect of Shudder is the member reviews and ratings. Now, unlike most streaming sites, Shudder promotes the idea of member comments. Obviously, I know that others have the rating system, and I do think that this will be monitored for, say, spoilers or profanity. But to be honest, I never really noticed that kind of stuff. I really, really love this idea of the skull rating instead of star rating. I know, again, it's small things, but they do go a long way, and it's almost like you're using an IMDb or a letterbox. And the experience for, say, critical thinkers or reviewers is really really good now initially i started shudder as part of or i guess on top of my amazon prime streaming service on my smart tv and laptop but shudder can be viewed on almost all devices so it's available on the app store google play amazon or roku stick devices amazon and of course an xbox console the biggest caveat for me though is that it's exclusive for xbox so unfortunately for all us playstation gamers though a smart stick is cheap and if you have a smart TV, then it's pretty simple to stream. So a bit of a small problem, really. It's important also to mention that Shudder doesn't always stream its content in 4K or HD. In fact, the majority of films are in 720p or 480p, which isn't an issue for, say, your older content, like your Texas Chainsaw Massacre or your Nosferatu, for example, the obvious. But for most new things, it's a massive thumbs down for me, especially considering now. Netflix originals are usually in such good quality, particularly as documentaries. So on to the pricing, the prices are around $5.99 per month in the US and that equates to around £3.99 for UK viewers. There is an annual option which sees you paying less per month over one year, but let's face it, for all the content you are getting, a monthly price is, is a thumbs up anyway and it's quite cheap really for, uh, for £4 or say $6.00. So is it worth it and should you buy? Well, I bought this around Halloween time and it's definitely served its purpose. Plus the features are easy to use. It's easy to navigate the site and where the collections are very helpful for any new horror fans or people looking into the genre. At first sight, it looks and feels like Netflix. It's got the same layout, the same colors, which I would say is it's a thumbs up because Netflix, in my opinion, is the easiest streaming service to use and the most noticeable. So I would say it is worth it or it's basically a must for any horror fan. However, if you're on the fence or just don't really watch enough horror, stick to your basic streaming services or more general ones. Shudder is cheap easy to navigate and it's perfect for any nerdy niche cinema or any horror fan but if you don't watch horror that often and can't afford to pay on top of you know your streaming services that you already are paying for then maybe just purchase this one for the october season and on that note take care everybody